Hello students, in this video we'll define the notion of integrability for bounded functions. Let's suppose that f is bounded on the interval a, b, closed. Okay? And consider a partition p which is a collection of points x0, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, where we have a is equal to x0 less than x1 less than x2, monotonically up to xn minus 1 less than xn, which is equal to b. So I'm given a partition of the interval a, b. And all that looks like is the following. So I just take my closed interval a, b. There's a, there's b and I just find a sequence of points that increase from A to B, and that would be my partition. So that would be X1, that would be X2, and this point would be Xn minus 1, and that's a partition of AB. We define U of F in P to be the sum, J goes from 1 to N, of the supremum over all points X in the interval x j minus 1 to x j of f of x times x j x j minus 1. And likewise, we can define the LF p, which is the sum j goes from 1 to n of the infimum of x x j minus 1 x j f of x times xj, xj minus 1. And let's figure out what these uf and lfp are geometrically. So if we're given a function, let's just assume the function is nice and continuous. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. Here's a and here's b. Be given just a partition 1, 2, 3. Like this, okay? So what is the UFP going to do? So the UFP is going to look on this interval and say, okay, what is the between, that's my x1, that's my x2, and that's my x3. The UFP is going to look on each of these intervals over here in the partition and say, what's the largest value of the function? Well, the largest value of the function over here would be this, and then it's going to multiply that height by this width over here, x1 minus x0. So this UFP is going to be that first area over there. Then over here, the supremum, the largest, is going to be corresponding to x2, so we're going to get this area over here, right? And then over here between x3 and x4, the supremum is this point over here. It does not either the end point, so we're going to get this height over here. And finally, between b and x3, the supremum occurs over here, so we're going to get this height over here. So it looks like what this upper sum is doing is this upper sum is going to give us the area of those four rectangles over here. So that is going to correspond to the upper sum over here, so that orange area will be the upper sum area. That would be my upper sum. That's going to be my UFP. Okay? And now, of course, what will, the, what will the LFP do? It's going to give you the smallest value. So over here, what we'll have is we'll have something like this. That green is going to be the smallest value in that interval. The smallest value in this interval goes over here. The smallest value occurs where? Right over here on this interval. And the smallest value occurs over here. So that's my LFP. P, okay? So these UFP and these LFPs are called upper and lower Riemann sums. So what these are called, they're called upper and lower. This is an upper Riemann sum, and this is a lower Riemann sum. What we can see from this is we can see that clearly it's the case that LFP is less than or equal to UFP. And now what happens? Well, we're going to find a notion of what it means to be a finer partition. So definition, we say, we say that Q is finer than P. If what? If P is a proper subset, of Q, okay? So in other words, with a finer partition, where P and Q are partitions here, so these P and Q are partitions, so of course what will happen to a partition? A finer partition is just going to do what? A finer partition than P, if this is your partition over here, P, in this example over here, if this was your partition P, if P was just 
A, X1, X2, X3, and then B, if that was your partition P, a finer partition might be this. I might throw in a few extra points over here. I might call this point over here, let's call that point Y1, that point Y2, it doesn't have to be there. I might skip that interval and have like Y3 over here, and I just have added more points into there. So my Q, the finer partition in this case, would be what? The Q would be A, Y1, Y2, X1, I missed X1 over here, so X1, X2, X3, Y3, and then B. That's a finer partition. Now, of course, what happens with a finer partition? With a finer partition, what's happening to the lower sum? The lower sum is doing what? Well, you have a smaller interval on which to do the infimum. So the infimum is going to get what? It's going to get, in principle, can be larger. And if you have the upper sum, if you're looking at a finer partition, what happens? The supremum can get what? Over a finer partition, the supremum can get smaller over here. So it's clear. So note, as an elementary proposition, we have this. If Q is finer than P, so Q finer than P, implies what? Let's look at an upper sum U, F, P versus U, F, Q. Well, as you get a finer and finer partition, the upper sum is going to go down. It's going to decrease over here. So the U, F, P is greater than or equal to this thing. So these things are going down. And this implies what? This implies that if we look at L, F, P relative to L, F, Q, what will happen? Well, as I get a finer and finer partition, the finer and finer partition makes the lower sum bigger, right? So these things get bigger than this, okay? So we have these things as I make my partitions finer and finer and finer and finer. The upper sums are going to be decreasing, 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 decreasing. As I make my partitions finer and finer and finer and finer, these lower sums are going to be increasing, 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 increasing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say we're going to define two quantities. Define uf is going to be the what? u capital of f is going to be the infimum over all partitions of UFP, the smallest of these values. And we're going to define LF to be the supremum over all these LFs and Ps. And we say that F is Riemann integrable if what? So here's our definition. Definition. F is Riemann integrable on A, B. And we're assuming, of course, that this F is bounded for this to make sense. F is Riemann integrable on A, B if U, F, this infimum, is equal to this supremum over here. So when those two quantities are equal, we say the function is Riemann integrable. In future videos, we'll see examples of proving that certain functions are Riemann integrable. Thank you very much.